All right. Bullin' now. Eh, it's 10 o'clock. That's not uh, bad. Not a bad time to start. We're just gonna wait a tiny bit to let people... I do think I have to get rid of one, so. Um. Yes. We're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait a little bit. Uh. For people to kind of file in. I didn't expect uh, many people to show up for a Metroid Prime stream, but I didn't like you. What do we got for the image gallery? That scared me. I thought the game just crashed. Oh, what? Oh, this must have been the original designs for the levels. I cannot believe this controller has, like, outlived. Consoles. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. That looks like a Fallout, uh, Fallout One and Two level with the isometric. Is it supposed to be cool boots or something? Mushroom. I really like the mushroom. Those look like Google search images. These are just like concepts, uh, uh, concept art. We're just looking through because I don't want to start playing yet. Like Crowley. Sh this looks like maybe what they had in mind for the original map. Doesn't really look like that now though. Last call. The time is running. You have I have five hours for the new McAfee. The, the antivirus software. I think the concept art for the second game is way cooler. Options. Oh, I see. All right, um... I might turn myself up a little bit more. Alright. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Uh, home little case city. Oh, the pog. Or the, the, the poggers. Hud lag. I don't know what that means. Hint system on. Yeah, let's keep the hint system on. <laughs> Just in case we forget where to go. Alright, well. Eh, it's 10.06. Metroid Fusion Connection bonuses? Aw, oh, man. Only if we had... What do you need for this? Do you need one of those really... Oh my god. To play NES Metroid on your Nintendo GameCube, complete Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance and connect... Complete Metroid Prime and connect Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance to Metroid Prime. Yeah, I don't got any of that. Alright, well. Start a new one on hard. This game isn't... 
This game is pretty easy, so... Hard mode is kind of like, eh. You know. It's not too easy and it's not too hard. Does the game sound alright? Uh, this game has some amazing uh, music and sound effects, so I just hope they're coming through. There she is. There's our girl. We are going to watch all the cutscenes. They are not optional. That looks like a pretty messed up planet. Man, these graphics look a little different uh, than what I remember. <laughs> Crunchier than what I remember. Oh, emergency evacuation or environment unstable. We are going to be reading absolutely everything. Propulsion, deck gamma current. Environment normal. Okay, so there's a reason why they sent out a distress signal. <laughs> All right. All right. So of course I wanted to stream this game because I love this game. Uh, is it the most exciting game to watch or play? No. Do I love it anyways? Yeah. <laughs> And am I really looking for... Alright, everything kind of fucked up here. Uh, would I look for any reason? Like by severing of the spinal cord, that sucks. Am I looking for any reason to play this again? Uh, yeah. <gasps> Our first creature! Ah! <laughs> it's just so vermin travel in swarms. The parasite is harmless to larger life forms, however, they tend to travel in large groups. Such swarms can be dangerous. Damn. Death caused by a sick burns to body, chemical type unknown. Damn. These muscle structures surrounding the dry area. Ooh, it's like the ass are also detected. Alright, sick. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. No mercy for space pirates, though. Oh. Oh, 
Well, looks like all of the, uh... Nice. All the escape pods were launched, so... Like, I don't know why Samus is even still up here. Like, I would just be like, alright. <laughs> They're down at the planet. Let's go get them. Um... Just a quick overview for this uh, this playthrough. This isn't going to be any kind of speed run or 100% or anything like that. I will be doing my best to kind of get everything in the game just because it's fun, but I'm not going to go like super out of my way. This is just kind of a fun little thing. I don't really like speed runs or 100% things. I just kind of like to play a video game. I ain't gonna be using any uh, glitches or exploits, really. There's probably... There's only, like, one exploit I know how to actually do for this game. And I'll probably do it, because I'm scum. But it's a... It's kind of a smaller thing. It's not like it's gonna shave two hours off the gameplay. Oh. Is this thing still... Oh, yeah, it is. Unknown low life science detector that appears to be in a state of sleep hibernation. Sick, dude. Ooh, I, I kind of feel bad for these guys. I mean, I know they wouldn't show me mercy, but I am. Uh, oh, that's a war crime. The carapace of a larger becomes rigid. Um. I don't even know what they're researching here. The parasites and shit? Is that the Parasite X or whatever? But yeah, I like how like the first thing you do in this game... Uh... Is a war crime. Like, dude, you can't... Kill... Weakened foes. Redeemed revive Lucio. Lucio isn't dead yet. Phase on a few stage four. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, sick! Ooh, is that lore? Why did you zoom over to that one? Zeebs has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead, either killed by the hunter clad in metal gear, metal, or in the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. Our research frigates Orpheon, Syriacus, Cer and Val Paragome. We're in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Frigate Orpheon is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orpheon's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy, but on restrictive feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We are ready to begin research in the Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at cold blue. No life sign, no signs of pursuit from the hunter. Oh, if you like to read, you're gonna love this. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's pissed. Holding cell unknown. Xenotropic life form unstable. Use caution. Well, he's pissed alright. And, uh, you know, looking around, you get a quick view of uh, some of the enemies you're gonna be fighting down on the planet. Kinda nice, obviously, you know, none of it's useful, but. Cryptocurrency. I forgot you have unlimited cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh, hello. Let me help you tend to your wounds. He shot first. <laughs> oh, this is a full health one. What the hell? It takes three? Oh shit. <laughs> I 
I'm trying to scan. I'm so bad. Like, they got some funky music on here. Oh, shit. Isn't this forget Orpheon? Hmm. I can't remember. Oh, shit. Hello. Can I scan you? Yeah, I can. Wait, did I just activate the- Oh, god damn it. This is cutting time my speed run. Just turn back on. All right, we are coming back down. <laughs> I think I did that the last time I played this game, too. I want to scan the dudes. Ah, oh, whatever. Where'd these guys die from? Severe lacerations to the abdomen. Oh, got caught up. Removal of internal organs. Well, why did you die from that? Simply get through it, dude. Open sesame. Okay. Right. Technically, since I'm not in the room, they can't actually see me. So, like, even though I'm standing right there, the turrets aren't like program the shooting and I think this is a yeah I'm gonna be saving like as often as I can because the um the the wire to my GameCube is pretty uh delicate so like if I accidentally jostle it or something the I, the GameCube will just shut off Get me out of there. There we go. Well, looks like a reactor to me. Oh, shit. Ooh, you're scary. Parasite Queen. It is time to strafe. You always want to scan the bosses because you only got one chance at them. Parasite Female. Genetically enhanced by unknown means. Sense of a potent mutagen. Origins unknown. Creature exhibits the ability to fire. Weapon grade blast in the mouth. Not to scan the genome. It appears the space. The pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. Yeah, so. Um, for those who are uninformed about, I don't know, Metroid lore, which I mostly am, I don't really know much of the story uh, outside of Metroid Prime. But, uh, this takes place, this game takes place, I think, second or third, um, second or third in the, uh, whatchamacallit, chronologically. Like, obviously, it's not the second or third made, but it's, you know, in, in order of the story, it's like the third one, I think. Which is why there's still, like, Metroids, and, uh, there's no Parasite X or anything like that. I'm pretty sure all... I think it goes Metroid... I think it goes Metroid, Metroid Primes 1, 2, and 3, and then Super Metroid. Actually, no, Metroid... Yeah. No, I think that's how it goes. 
Oh well, we killed a giant bug. Get squashed. <laughs> and they do give you a, a healthy amount of time to escape. I love how the music's like, dude, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. And it's like, well, yeah, I have seven minutes. <laughs> Oh, sick. Oh, holy Jesus. Okay, don't know what ha was going on there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, my. Let's go... Is it faster just to ball? Of course it's faster to ball. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I'm taking a lot of damage from that. I can't see. Where am I going? Oh, shit. Wait, is this the right way? No, I think I'm going the wrong direction. Uh... Wait, yeah, I'm going backwards. Oops. <laughs> the goop blinded me. Uh, okay, uh... <laughs> now we gotta hurry. The game heard me talking shit. Oh, oh, you think seven minutes is too much? Alright, well, fuck you. Never mind. <laughs> I'm like, all right, never mind. I'm stuck. It's been a little while since I've played this game. I just hope I remember all the buttons for everything. Oh, shit. Bye bye. Oh, I please open. I think every every single Metroid game has some sequence where there's a timer and you gotta get through it and there's no turrets in here. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's in Metroid Prime 3. Oh well. We are getting out of here though. We got about four minutes left. Holy shit. Oh, nice. Let's get it. All right, please open. Got to wait all this time for the doors to unlock. Oh. <laughs> She looks up and she's like, Ridley, you're too big for Smash Brothers. How are you here? Oh, Lord. Wait, are these? Oh, crap. These are scannable. Meta Ridley, cerebral casing stable, exoskeleton seal holding, begin umbilical ref retraction. Weapon update complete, stronger ballistics online, plasma fuel cell online. Okay, not good. Ah, uh, disable the defense turret again. Nice. Ow! What the hell? That almost killed me! Oh, and here it comes. The moment where everything gets stripped away from you. <sighs> I 
Maria suit malfunction. What do we lose? Morph ball. All right. Missiles. Fantastic. Our charge beam. Great. Our grapple beam. Wonderful. All right. We didn't lose too, too much. Except, you know, half of our offensive capabilities. But, you know, whatever. Ooh. Is there a way to turn up the, uh... Nope. Huh. <laughs> yep, there's no way to turn up the sensitivity. Room is depressurizing. Well, can you... Open? Dude, come on. Oh, right, we lost the morph ball. <laughs> okay, here we go. And, of course, he escapes, because it wouldn't be a Metroid game without fighting Ridley. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up to him. Ridley just zooms halfway across the planet. Like, alright. Okay, so... Well, I lost him. Better start looking on foot. This little area is so sick, and you barely spend any time in it. Yep, yeah, might as well. Well. Time to start. <laughs> Oh wait, we gotta scan. <laughs> uh, you gotta scan the things. Come on, that's half the charm of this game. You get a little Dark Souls item description on any everything you scan. Pat Fusty, I'm gonna kill you. Literally a half hour later. And Pat Fussy's like, yeah. Nice. Like, dude. <laughs> that was a half hour ago. Where were you when I needed you, Pat Fussy? Does that mean stream should start a half hour early so Pat Fussy, uh... <laughs> Excuse me. I'm quite tired. Except I'm too excited to actually play this game, so. <laughs> Incoming scan data. Oh, this is gonna be like the little blurb. Yeah. Oh! I have the little hints on. Um, they're like the little, almost like little objective markers telling you where to go. Um because I'm a loser. Oh shit, here's Laura Pier. At the highest point of our city lies the fountain, a wellspring of pure water that flows throughout our civilization. It is the jewel of the Chozo, the life giver, and yet its waters speak of a clouded future. As we come to understand the depth, the paths of time and space more clearly, we have begun to glimpse through tatters of past and future, glittering reality like soft lights behind a curtain. We have seen the fountain in these glimpses pouring darkness instead of water, and we cannot guess what the vision means.
lurking, but I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Lurk and hear my words. <laughs> or something, I don't know. <laughs> Night Pop, love you. And this has been our Night Pop uh, section of the stream. I'm glad you were all here for it. <laughs> Honestly, I think my kind of streams are, uh, more along the lines of, uh, you're kind of doing, uh, or you're doing something, and as background noise, you just kind of put something on. Because most of the time when I, like, play something, it's not actually, you don't actually have to, like, I don't know, I just feel like it's the kind of content that you don't really need to watch, that you, you can just kind of listen to. Not to say that my commentary is good, I just mean, like, when I'm playing something, usually it's kind of slow. So you can just kind of, like, wash your dishes or something. And I am there, speaking in your ears. Save station is active. Yes, I know where the save station is. Very good background noise. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I just think my content is that kind of content. Which is my favorite- Personally, that's my favorite kind of content. Like, I don't care how much effort you put into anything. If I can have you on in the background while I'm doing something, that means your content is good. That is solid content. Especially with this game, because this game is a lot of reading. <laughs> we Chozo are departing now, after so many years in peaceful seclusion here on Talon 4. When we came, this place was a refuge for our spirits, a civilization built from native materials, benefit, bereft of the trappings of our technology. We were linked to the land here, kindred to the plants and animals, far away from machines we had become to depend on. And so we leave now, so we leave it now, pristine, a testament to the mortal forms we no longer need. We have drawn the veils of time and space aside and are withdrawing beyond the illusion. But we will never forget this, the most sacred of our homes, and we will remain ever watchful. Yeah, bad news. It does not appear, appear important. Alright. Uh, bad news, dude. Everything's about to go to shit. <laughs> I think Metroid Prime especially. Like, this combat... Like, this is, like, my favorite game of all time, and it's it's not because, of, like, the, the combat is super intriguing, because it's not, you know, it's very basic, kind of surface level, but it's mostly about the world building, and the, uh, the map setup in this game is great. This, uh, this great, this game has, like, really good, uh, interconnecting map parts, if you know what I mean, like... Like, you'll be walking for five hours, and it's like, oh god, where am I headed? And, you know, something will happen, and it's like, oh, holy shit, this is... And then you'll find, like, a, a shortcut. Like, you know, back... That saves you, like, an hour of time, or some shit like that. It's just good. It's just good like that, I think. I really like it when games do that. When they get really, uh... You know, kind of more... Not so much non-linear, but very interconnected. Like, you're... The game's more of a web than a straight line. Which, uh, you can only really get in more... Directed games, I think. Like... I would say... Open worlds don't fit that criteria because it's a big open world. So you don't get that interconnectedness. You kind of do, but not really. But when you play a game like this where there's a set kind of map, that's when you get the solid map design. And we have sprung a trap. Although, I don't know anything about map design. I'm not a game creator, so I don't know anything, but... <laughs> That's the vibe I get. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know nothing about map design. I've never made a map uh, for, like, a video game or anything, so... 
Yeah, until we get the charge beam, there's gonna be a lot of uh, button mashing. And I do love how the uh, the kind of earlier bosses in this game really teach you about how to use all the stuff in your HUD. Like this fight, since you can't really lock on uh, when they're not, when they're uh, moving, you kind of have to use your, your aim one, which is your right trigger. And you have to use your mini map because, uh, you know, they'll stop like behind you and shit. So you kind of want to use your mini-map to see where they're coming from. Because you can only see so much in this helmet. Whenever there's a talk about people with helmets on the internet... Wow, oh shit, that was kind of easy. <laughs> uh, my girl Samus barely gets mentioned. It's usually like Master Chief... Uh, Doom Slayer, obviously, is a really popular one now. Um, used to be, uh, you know, in older conversations, it was like Doom Guy instead of the Doom Slayer. Um, Isaac Clark from Dead Space, I see sometimes. And now, of course, uh, you have uh, the Mandalorian, who I still really can't pronounce his last name. Din Djarin? Din Djarin. Yeah, Din Djarin. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, the water's all gone. Nope, not really, but kind of. Uh, so he's one that shows up a lot now. And my... My best friend Samus has been cast to the side. <laughs> Give her back her crown. But of course, anyone who knows anything knows that Isaac Clarke is the uh, best helmet on protagonist. I, no. Am I taking criticism? No. Religion. Okay. It's, it's only because I was talking to you about it the other day. Okay. This rant is going, and I'm sure everyone is going to groan when I start talking about it because I've ranted about this before. This rant is going to be about biblically accurate angels. Okay, the biblically accurate angels meme is completely false, and here's why. First off, biblically accurate is not the right term because angels are never, uh, never explicitly described in the Bible. They are very few are even mentioned by name. They are never like explicitly described. They are described in other religious texts, don't get me wrong, they are described. But it's not in the Bible. The Bible isn't about that. The Bible is like The Bible is like Lord of the Rings, right? It's Lord of the Rings and um the other religious Christian texts are like the Silmarillion where they get into more of the crazy stuff, while the Bible is mostly centered on things that happen solely on this, uh, this plane of existence. So angels are never explicitly described because mostly it's not important. Obviously they say, uh, do not be afraid or be not afraid, which kind of gives you an idea that they might look a little freaky. Especially to uh, Mary, who's, you know, just sleeping in her house and somebody breaks in and goes, oh, Be not afraid, lady! Um, so they're never explicitly described. That's, that's the first half of it. The second half is the fact that there are many, there are nine total different kinds of celestial spirits. Angels are the lowest form of celestial spirit. They are, they preside over only individuals and they look normal or they look more humanoid you know they have the they got the wings um that's a dead end uh they have the wings they have the cute robes they have the cute cheeks and they walk around and go haha be not afraid those are angels they do kind of look normal the 
ones that you kind of see on the internet are... Most of them are actually Seraphim. They're either Seraphim, Cherubim, or Thrones, because they are the freakiest looking. Seraphims are the one where they are wings and usually just a single big eye in the middle. Um, thrones are the huge wings, or uh, the huge rings, um, because they are literally the wheels that pull the throne of God. And the cherubim are the angels that have, um, or the celestial spirits that have, like, different heads. Like, they got, uh, they might look like, they have, like, a human head maybe, but off to the side there might be a lion's head, a, an ox head, a bull, you know, things like that. And it just gets me. It's just like, dude, that's not, what are you, Usually I just keep my mouth shut and then sometimes I get, I complain because I'm whining. Okay, that's the end of the rant. Everyone go home. Never thought you'd get a religious lesson from a Metroid Prime stream. Alright, second part. Uh, the most recent Godzilla movie is uh, is an allegory for the resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> and how I almost got beat up in Boston because I was talking about it. <laughs> Alright, that's kind of bait. That's kind of YouTuber. Oh, this almost got- I almost got- I didn't get almost beat up. But people looked at me very angrily. But I didn't almost get beat up. That's- that's kind of clickbait. Uh, alright. We scan you. You especially want to scan things in this game that you're never going to see again. Because this is the only time you get to scan them. I think this turns into a mini boss later on, so. I've never thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not once. Brain empty. Temporal lobe. Mush. Oh, did I get him? No, I thought I did. Oh, come on. Where is Miss Giggums? She should be down here. It is her bedtime. Dude, just die. You know you're not gonna kill me. <laughs> nice. I love, like, the mini the mini boss music in this game too. It's so like, uh, I'm mostly gonna be talking about the music in this game because it's like my favorite part of the game. Aside from all the item collection, which is also fun. I do like how, you know, they kind of rip away all your items and then you slowly kind of get them back along with, uh, Um, uh, what am I thinking? <laughs> Guys, help, I'm dumb. <laughs> oh, along with getting new items that you didn't come to the planet with. Uh, we're gonna uh, ignore those enemies. Oh, get up there. And I know exactly where to go. This way. I remember the first time I played this game, I got so stuck. Because I was a dumb kid. I guess I still am dumb, but... <laughs> now I just know the path to get there. You know, I kind of think about... Uh, I think a lot about how it always feels so much better to like beat a game without any guides or help or anything whatsoever because now it's like when you get stuck in a game it's so easy just to you know look up how to do it and i'm not saying there's any shame in that um because there really isn't because you know you bought the game you want to experience it why the why the hell not uh you know, look up a guide if you get stuck, but I'm just talking like it, I'd always feel so much better to make it through on like your own, uh, own merit. Revive Lucio. No, Lucio has permanently passed into the great beyond. 
uh, the next time you see them, they will be a ghost. They can still interact, but they're just a ghost. As we struggle with the great poison, something stirs at the edge of our vision. It is the hatchling Samus. We feel her across the void as she hunts the corrupted. Will our fates again be won? As our pride shatters, will prophecy become real? When all strength wanes from the Chozo, will it be the hatchling who fulfills our legacy? True sight eludes us, for the poison gnaws at all vision, leaving seers blind and filled with despair. Truth's blessing may come too late. Uh, in layman's terms, it's up to us. <gasps> I love this little room and I have no idea why. Not right now, but when, um... Later on in the game, I, I don't know why, but I just love this little area. Anyways, uh, enough of me gushing over this game. Uh, followed up by me gushing over this game. This game's great. <laughs> I am so glad I picked this game up for five dollars at GameStop. I remember um, when I went to uh, to buy this game. Um, I remember I had my little Velcro blue wallet with me, and you know I'm I'm getting it out, and uh, I, and I was with my mom, and she's like, uh, she's like, oh, how much is it? And I'm like, it's five dollars, and she's like, what? And she just pulls out a $5 bill out of her pocket and she's like, what? Wait, I'll just pay for it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And what a fucking use of $5. For the amount of serotonin you get from this game, you make off like a bandit for $5. Anyways, uh, I want to scan mushroom. Mushroom scanned. And we're out of missiles. Uh, yeah, that was me. That was me when I got serotonin from playing this game. Let me scan you first before you kill me. Ow. That or uh, hurt. No, 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 no. I'm sorry for doing that. No more clone high, no more JFK. We're done with it. I've seen this man everywhere. And I don't want to see anymore. Oh, holy shit. Hold on. Oh, crap. I think, uh... That which fouls the waters seeks the sun. The great poison comes from Talon's core. What, what is this? I don't know. I'll, I'll probably be able to blast it open there. That which fouls the water seeks the sun. Oh crap, I have no fucking missiles. <laughs> God damn it. I have to like farm enemies for missiles then. Okay, kinda lame. Not gonna lie. Ow. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> Am I gonna be stuck here? I just need one missile drop. One missile drop gives you five missiles. Oh, it's a baby mushroom. You must die. Oh, shit. <gasps> That's a missile drop. Oh my god, please tell me I can get it. <laughs> Dude. Grow up. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, we're dying. Hope everybody likes this game, because this is... <laughs> I'm also going to be playing the sequel once I'm done with this one. <laughs> Even if this game is like, I don't know what to call it. Like, it's a total time sink. Not in the fact that this game's going to take me a long time. I mean in the fact that, like, nobody is going to watch me play this game. Because it's Metroid Prime. 
and it's taking up like a spot but i guess we didn't have sunday night streams anyways but if there's ever a plan for like a reoccurring sunday night stream uh that isn't this game i will happily give up the spot <laughs> Like, nobody's gonna watch me play this. <laughs> I don't know how many people have a lot of nostalgia for this game. Huh. Alright, so... There's two more. Um, I always forget where they are. Okay, water once flowed here. That is so crazy. Let me give you a pat on the back for it. All right. Um, right, so the last one is here. Oh, it's always that. <sighs> it's always that one that I miss. It's like the crown. I think it's just like over here. Okay, that was a close one. It's like up here somewhere. I, I can't. Oh, there we go. Is that it? Yep. Awesome. I fell. I fell again. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> oh, god damn it. You, you, you kind of feel a little sluggish in this game, I'm not going to lie. Especially before uh, you get some upgrades that increase your movement. At least you're kind of tanky. Especially on the normal difficulty. Once you have, like, a lot of health on the normal difficulty, you are invincible. We read the lore. It's the most important bit. We have returned to Talon 4, born here against our will by a great cataclysm from the reaches of space. A meteor came, casting a dark shadow of debris over the land with the Im violence of its impact. Though we perceived this from beyond space and time, it was but a curiosity. A brief flare in the infinite march of the universe. But the meteor brought with it corruption. A great poison birth, burst forth from the, into the land, clawing at life with such violence that we were ripped from our peaceful state and find ourselves wandering in shadows of the mortal forms we left behind, searching for why we are here. And charge beam. This is kind of a, you know, a tragic story when you think about it. Like, these people had... These people realized that their way of life kind of sucked. Like, we can't become super dependent on technology. I didn't scan these yet. They're kind of funky. go nailed it um so they came to this planet and they were like oh sick uh we're gonna be peaceful and we're not gonna use technology and we're just gonna vibe here and then by doing that they like transcended reality like they literally like uh left behind their mortal form and achieved what what basically i would imagine amounts to like nirvana and then this fucking meteorite crashes into their planet and brings them back to reality. We are gonna save because... Well, you know what? It's only been an hour. And if the game crashes, I'm gonna be kind of upset. So we're gonna vibe around and do some other stuff. Because there's a hallway uh, up ahead that has kind of a consistency to crash sometimes. So instead we're gonna... Please stop swiping at me. We're gonna kind of explore around here instead. Okay, that hurt. It's always good to explore in this game. I mean, it's a Metroidvania, what do you expect? Did I just really call this game a Metroid?
the pinnacle of gaming uh, journalism is when somebody plays a Metroid game and calls it a Metroidvania. Like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's got Metroid in the name. Come on, dog. Alright, so there's a couple... We can't progress in this area yet. I just realized that. Alright, well, we'll pick up those two. And... Huh. Where does that go? Wait, no. I know where that goes. We can't go there yet. Oh, no. I know what I know what that is. We can't do that either. Okay. Um Shit. Uh <laughs> I think we're going to have to progress and just cross our fingers and hope the game doesn't crash. There must be a scratch or something on the disc. Because it, it always crashes in the same spot. I think it's, yeah, I think it must be some kind of scratch on the disc or, you know, something. But I did get it to, uh... Oh, shit. Doesn't this thing have a special... Yeah. The path of corruption leads ever higher. I forgot I can draw on pickups. <laughs> um... I remember the last time I played this, uh, it crashed in this hallway. And at first, I, I, at first, I was, like, absolutely heartbroken. I'm like, oh, uh, there must have been a scratch, you know. Disc is just old. I bought the game pre-ordered, so this disc is mad old. So I'm like, well, I guess that's kind of it. And so I just kind of went around and just picked up all the random pickups I could find. And for some reason, it worked. The next time I went down the hallway, it didn't crash. I'm like, I wonder if that's, like, somehow intentional. <laughs> oh. Don't know how I got up there, then. Sick. Alright. Turn off, turn off. You're on the ceiling. Ow. That did 50 damage, holy shit. Oh shit, there they are. Okay. Oh lord. That hurt. Alright. Uh, hmm. Okay, water. Not a good sign. I guess we can always go this way. <gasps> right! Isn't- doesn't this lead? Oh my. I think I know where this goes. Yeah! I remember this now. Oh, yep, shit. <laughs> Uh oh. Creature. Incinerator drone. Program for high temperature waste disposal. It's lack of battle prowess. Yeah. This is what I call a boss fight. <laughs> I will admit, this game does not have the best, uh, bosses some of the time. But I still love it to death. Uh-oh. Barbed War Wasp. Oh. 
Oh, now you gotta play uh, hopscotch because you can. Oh, oh. Most of the bosses in this game aren't too tough. I think the uh, difficulty mostly comes from, uh, on one hand, if you don't explore, you're gonna be woefully under uh, underprepared for the later areas of the game. Like if you don't collect any, you know, health or missile pickups, you're not gonna you're not gonna be doing so hot. But this game does, uh, it is pretty generous with the missile pickups, like, you'll find a good amount just by kind of going around the game, but you can find a lot if you really kind of explore. And that just blew up for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, my wrists hurt. Yes. Man, Morph Ball gives you so much stuff. We can go to so many places now. Especially in this beginning area of the game, there's insane amount of, uh, especially missile upgrades at this point in the game. You can get a lot of missiles before the end. Which is always useful, because missiles are like your best chance at dealing a lot of damage. Even when you get like better weapons later on in the game, missiles are still... You get like special missile combos and shit. Those things deal insane amounts of damage. I got stuck in the wall. <laughs> uh, holy shit. Don't hurt me. You, you are small. I wish all Sam a very, a very what? <laughs> Vulnerable only from within, still for days. I wish all Sam a very die. And you know what? Energy spike detected, let me guess. Wow. That's crazy. Um. No, you know what? We'll do this, and then we'll go back and save, and then we'll try to go through the door. And if it doesn't work, we'll go do some pickups. I remember this being, like, way harder than it should have been, uh, when I played this game. Again, that was probably from me being kind of young and, you know. Everything seems a lot harder as a kid, uh, in terms of video games, and then you do it later on in your life, and it's like, oh, huh. Except when it comes to Flash games, I had no idea how any of us played flash games when we were when we were kids like those are so fucking impossibly hard like holy shit some of those flash games are insanely difficult how did we do any of them Uh, what is it? Alien Hominid. That's what it was called. That game was hard as shit. <laughs> oh, that was the puzzle. Alright, so we unlocked the door, but we are actually gonna go back and save just in case. Because this is the hallway that might crash on us. Uh, if it crashes, um, obviously the stream we're we're still gonna be streaming this. I'm just gonna turn the GameCube back on, 
And we're gonna go get some pickups, and hopefully that'll just fix the problem like it did the last time I played this game. Don't ask me how, I consider it magical. Because oh. after, when you're doing stuff, and like you do like a really boring objective or something, and then the game crashes on you, it's always a pain in the ass. I'm trying not to disturb the mush. Although, I think, um, this, like, energy spike or whatever, I'm pretty sure it's just a health up. So we might just be able to completely avoid it. I don't actually remember if it's, uh, mandatory or not. Eventually it will be, but, uh, you know. But that's later. That's not a tonight stream. We're not gonna get that far tonight. Like I said, this uh, this isn't a speed run. <laughs> if this was a speed run, how long have we been? Yeah, if this was a speed run, the game would probably be over by now. <laughs> what's the world uh, What's the world record for Metroid Prime? I'm gonna look it up. Hold on. Ten percent battery. Fine, I'll look it up on my computer. One sec. Uh, forty nine minutes. Fifty one, one thirteen, okay. So it seems like uh forty nine minutes. Excuse me, it seems like forty nine minutes is the uh world record for this game. Which I don't know if that's right, but that's like the first um that's like the first YouTube link of whatever I got. So I'm gonna take it. Up oh. There it goes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah. I turn game off. We get a nice classic blue screen. I turn game on. Oh my god, Nintendo made this? Oh my god, Dolby Surround made this? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, 49 minutes, or about 50 minutes is the, uh, seemingly the world record. Let's see, uh, hmm, 42 minutes and we've done 8% of the game. <laughs> Lord, that must be using glitches or whatever, because you can't even move through the game in under, in under an hour. Even if you did everything perfect, you couldn't even walk that fast. Like, I kind of... When it comes to speedruns, I'm a little, uh... Yeah, energy spike detected. Yeah, the energy spike is crashing my game, dude. Come on. So we're just gonna, yeah, we're, we're not gonna do any of that. We're gonna vibe, we're gonna pick up some collectibles, we're gonna probably fight the second boss. Uh, cause I don't think you actually need that, that pickup to actually go here. I think that's an optional area right now. But, uh, on one hand, I think speedruns are kinda dumb. Because it's almost like you're spending all this time just to 
like not play the game. But on the other hand, it is interesting seeing how people uh, run games differently. You know, just to see all the... I think the glitches, personally, I think the glitches are kind of cool. Um, where are we going? Right, we're going this way. Uh, I see how some people, like, think that glitches are kind of like a, a hand, um, like a handout. Like, oh, well, you used glitches to beat the game faster. That doesn't really count. I think they're kind of cool to see. Um, a really interesting one I saw was, uh, it was a... Uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, I think. I think it was a Twilight Princess um, speed run, which... Um, it was that kind of speed run where you actually just have to do the least amount of stuff in the game. So even if you take the longest, if you get the minimum amount of items, you still win. And the speed run is like like 17 hours. And it's like that sounds insane, but it that's how long the glitch uh takes. And I can't remember where I'm going. Oh yeah, it's down here. Um that's just how long the glitch takes to, you know, schmooze. Because it, it's something about uh, if you hold a certain kind of rupee, uh, Link's idle animation moves him a little bit, like a couple, like, feet. So if you wait hours and hours and hours, he'll move. And I, I just think that's neat. People finding out weird and obscure ways to play video games. On one hand, it's dumb. And it's a waste of time. On the other hand, am I really gonna judge somebody for how they want to spend their free time? <laughs> I'm spending my uh, I'm spending my Sunday night playing a 15 year old game. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge somebody if they want to speed run a game. And I think, ooh, maybe not. Oh wait, I remember how to do this, I think. Uh, we go over here. Where did those beetles go? Oh shit! <laughs> Didn't even see him. Uh, don't fall out, please. Oh, nice. This is what I meant by this first, like, area of the game just throws missile upgrades at you. Like, hey, do you have enough missiles? Like, yeah, dude, I got almost, like, 30. Uh, yeah, here's some more. <laughs> but they, uh... Despite the missiles kind of being, you know... An absolute shower like you are completely showered in missiles at this point in the game um, they really know how to pace uh, health upgrades in this game they really knew what they were doing when they were pacing those I didn't even see this like they don't put too many at the beginning so that the whole game is a complete pushover but they also don't give you too little so that the game is ridiculously hard. I think that in the second one, I think they kind of... They kind of bamboos a little little. I think in the second one... The second one is much harder than this one. Not too hard. It's a good challenge. But, uh... Oh, Miss Giggums. What are you doing, my woman? Uh, I don't think they give you enough health kind of closer to the beginning of the game. Although maybe that's just me being bad at Metroid Prime 2, which I, I kind of am. <laughs> that one is so much, like, 
that one doesn't have a hard mode, and I know, uh, I kind of get why, because this hard mode is like, this game's hard mode is like, just regular Metroid Prime 2. I have no idea why, but like, all of the enemies hit so much harder, and it's just, like, the enemies in general are a lot more difficult to fight, and the areas are very hazardous. Oh, man. That game is going to be a... That game is very atmospheric. I'll say that. <laughs> and this is... Magmore Caverns. We can't go there. And we're going to... We're going to stealth it here. Because there are very... Intricate... Lore notes. Quick! Grab the lore! Where's the lore? No! Not the fucking wasp! The lore on the wall! Okay, all time is paused. Chozo script translated. The world of living things feels strange to us. We who have existed so long on the edges of time and space. It is clear now that we Chozo can never return to our dimension. And while the great poison reaches ever further into the planet, it is so powerful, this creeping evil, that our wills are crumbling and our minds are beginning to fail. And so, before it is too late, we now make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain th this darkness. At its heart, we will place a cipher, a mystical lock powered by 12 artifacts and filled with as much power as we Kozo can harness in our ethereal states. Even when we are done, it may be too late. And that's all we can do in this room. Let's buggy. <sighs> Alright. Uh, this way is to... Stuff. And things. Oh, right, we can't get this yet. Oh, but there's Lauren here, too, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got something in my throat, I think. <coughs> you do be rolling. I do be rolling on him, though. Best part of the game. Our sanctuary grows by the day. We Chozo know much of technology, but we have chosen to leave it behind on this journey. Our home here on Talon Floor will be a place of simplicity. Structures hewn from stone... Bridges woven with branches, hallways caressed by pure waters. We build around the ancient and noble trees, drawing from their strength and giving them our own in return. All that is wild will flow around us here. Our race will be just one more group of creatures in the knit of nature. It is our hope that such a state will bring with it great wisdom, a greater understanding of the nature of the universe. Once our city here is complete, we will peer inward and discover the truth. Very interesting. I really vibe with this race of beings. And ba ba ba. Oh, never mind. I thought this was it. Oh, Jesus. What's this? Oh, wait. Isn't this scannable? Yeah. Yeah, there's basically two kinds of scannable things in this game. You got research and you got um Speaking of health ups. Uh hmm, wait, where do we want to go? Maybe just back this way. Yeah, let's go back that way. You got research and you got creatures. Creatures are obviously, you know, just the living things. And research is like the, uh, more funky things. You know, like elevators and more mechanical stuff most of the time. Miss Giggums, where are you going? They do be they do be robbing the bank though. Gummy sharks having a heist. 
Oh no, I'm sorry, it's Gummy Sharks doing crimes. Can we just tank it? I don't feel like jumping over there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nope, we can't do that yet. That would kill us. Yep, 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 yep. Excuse me. Oh, I said, I said excuse me. Ow. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're going to go back this way. I just want to pick up items and shit. <laughs> and we're going to try that hallway one more time after I uh, go around and pick up these items. The floors above my head could not be squeakier. Jump around the mushrooms. I have no quarrel with these shrooms. Night mom, love you. That is our night mom for the evening. Uh, all right. Yikes. Ah, laser beam. I should have come back here later when we have a different upgrade, but it's fine. You want me to use two missiles? Damn. Three missiles? Damn. But I get five back, so it's fine. Yeah, I should have just came back here later. So we can get that one up there. Ah, whatever. See, like, that's an item we don't get until, like, the the spider ball track right there. That magnetic thing that was leading up that little tower. That's something we don't get for, like, you know, in terms of gameplay. Not in terms of time, obviously, but in terms of gameplay. That's something we don't get until, like, way later. And they give you a glimpse of what you can use it for now. And I think that's one of the very good parts of this game. It kind of gives you a glimpse of, oh, hmm, I wonder uh, what that's for. And it kind of incentive, uh, insensit. You know what? I'm not going to try that. <laughs> I'm not going to try that word. I'm not going to be able to say it. It gives you the incentive, that's better, um, to really uh, go back to some of these earlier areas just to pick up items and stuff. If you, if you collect every single item in the game, even on hard mode, you are going to be, like, ridiculously overpowered for, like, the later game. Like, you do not need... You need a good amount of stuff, but you definitely don't need everything in this game to, uh, to beat it. Ow. Mushroom blue. Um, most of it really is optional. We saved, right? We just did. Yeah, we like just did. I'm losing my mind. I ain't even paying attention to what's happening. I am... I'm going on natural instincts. And the natural instincts tell me to shoot mushroom. Yeah, if the, uh, if the hallway breaks again... Um, we're just gonna go do the boss. And we'll come back to this hallway... Probably, like, three streams later, when it's actually mandatory. Because you do have to come down this way, like, eventually, obviously, but, uh, you know. But yeah, let's see if it just randomly fixed itself, like, the last time we played this game. Let's try it. 
Not good. Alright. Alright, we're just gonna go fight the boss then. Just gotta turn it off. Turn it back on. Damn, for a minute there I thought we had it. It's fine. We don't need to go there yet. Um, I will be very disappointed if, uh, you know, we come back here a while from now and it's completely stuck. Because that would kind of mean... That would kind of mean the end of this, uh, this little playthrough. And at that point, I would just move on to the second game. The second game has no bugs or anything, really, that uh, that I remember. You know, no game-breaking ones like that. Um, the only game-breaking thing about the second game is uh, one of the boss fights. That's total fucking hogwash. And that makes me want to tear out my eyes just thinking about it. Yeah, energy spike detected. That's crazy. The energy spike is crashing my game. You bastards. I would like to get it, because that's... That's... It's another health bar. Which is nice, but... <sighs> I'm sure we can get along just fine. And now that we have the bombs, we can... Nope. Nope, I don't want to fight these things. These things suck. We got the bomb so we can just kind of blast on through right to the second boss. Oh. Uh, that's the third one. It's the third symbol. Shit. Yeah, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of uh, button spam until we get some of the better items. Or the better uh, guns. And I think the last symbol is just, like, right here, I think. Yeah. That should be all of them. Son of a bitch, it didn't save. <sighs> okay, back down to the bottom. It's not on a time limit, right? It's just a, uh... It's just that I left the room, I think. Oh, it should be, like, right there. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's dry, and I didn't bring any water down here with me. A, be a poor decision on my behalf. Ba -ba -da -ba. All right. Well, we got thirty three missiles. Oh. <laughs> Two missiles. I do kind of love how kind of out of nowhere the music just gets so much more sinister. Can y'all hear the music by the way? It's uh, it's banging. It is important to me. It is the most important part of the stream. I'm just hoping uh I can't really see how it's picking up. It looks like it's picking up though. Yeah. I just didn't want to make it too loud because, uh, you know, I don't want my gun to be super loud. Ouch. These things don't tell me anything. All right. 
Yuck. That's such a cool design. I love that. Oh, shit. Oh, he looks pissed. This mutant plant is the source of toxic water in the ruins. Flagra's growth cycle has radically accelerated. As a result, it requires near constant exposure to solar energy to remain active. This exposure has made Flagra's. Uh, Flagra's. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Out of shell, thick and durable. Its lower root system is unprotected and vulnerable, however. Split this flaw when possible. Constantly the fire can daze it for short periods. Alright, well. Obviously, this is uh, this is more of just a gimmick boss. I mean, obviously, every boss in this game has some kind of, you know, gimmick attached to it. So you, no boss is just like point shoot, it dies. But this boss, its gimmick is tied directly into its health. So even on hard mode, it doesn't really change anything. All right, he's gonna go down and then. Two more come up, and well, you get the idea. <laughs> Man, when I was a kid, this is what like killed me. I hated this fight. Ow! Jesus, how do I even dodge that? At least you can strafe really fast. Sadly, you can't skip these cutscenes. <laughs> Holy shit. Ow. Shit, doesn't he drop like health and shit when he... Oh my god. Holy shit. No, it doesn't. Whoa, oh my god. That hurts so much. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Go, go. Go, Samus! Sick. Whew, that was a close one. Not today, Rasmesis. Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can do this right. 
Yay! That was Raz. I know Lucio wasn't watching, so they missed Raz. Yeah! Already got the suit back. And I think that actually wraps up everything that we lost. Aside from the, the grappling hook. That pretty much uh, wraps up everything that we lost on the frigate. So, you know, it doesn't take too much time to get up to full, uh, full power again. This thing. Don't you drop bombs on me. Thank you. Uh, alright. Actually, yeah, that's actually exactly where we want to go. Holy shit. Sorry, dudes. Uh, yeah, we can, we can, we can just go right ahead. Oof. And now we gotta go through one of my least favorite areas of the game. I mean, I love this area, but I, I also hate this area. I can just fall, what am I doing? All right, uh, we're only at an hour and 38, so we'll keep going for a little while. I love how there's like this huge dramatic ass music and this looks like a, if this area was bigger, it would look like a final boss battle. And then there's just this little shithead walking around. Grisby. Look at him. He's so small. All of the enemies in this game are so small. Half the time, if you shoot them, you're a monster. Okay, what the fuck? That dude has some knockback. Oh my god. Never mind, those guys are assholes. Oh, well, here we are. Why do they call it Magmore Caverns? Magmores. Fire breathing serpent that dwells in the lava cliffs where he sells me. So, one power, one missile. Um, never mind, they just- they just never die. Holy shit. I guess as it goes in enemy- any, uh, video game, uh, you can kind of quantify enemies into two categories. Enemies that you can kind of...
to count how much it takes to kill them. And you know, you can kind of keep a close rein on your uh, on your ammo or whatever that way. And then there's enemies that the strategy is to shoot it until it dies. You know what I mean? Like in some with some enemies, it's like okay, if I hit him twice with the uh, the charge up and then once with the missile, it'll die. Or if I hit it once with the charge up, it'll stun, and then I can shoot it a couple times and it'll die. And then there are some enemies that it's like okay, I'm just gonna shoot at it and it's gonna fall over eventually, because <laughs> that's what it's coded to do when it takes damage. Like I'm just gonna fill it with bullets and I don't care what happens. Speaking of things I hate, god fucking damn it. Oh, thank god they only deal like six damage. No! I hate these things. You gotta lay the bombs. Otherwise, they pick you up and then just put you somewhere. Alright, um, I think there's some, I think there's some items we can get in this one, in this, uh, in this room. Why do I remember it being a pain in the, Jesus, pain in the ass to get him though. Hmm, probably was. Let's see, that looks like something. Uh, we need a way in. Obviously, there's a way to get underneath these platforms. That looks like it. Alright. How? There we go. <gasps> yeah, there's these little bastards. Where are they? Oh, there you are. I hate these things. Oh, he still damaged me. this? Oh, there's just a little hole in the ground. Alright, uh, ooh! Yeah, here we go. A prize, perhaps? Missiles. I'll take it. I would like to get a little bit more health, though. We only have two blips. We would have three if that. I am blind. Uh, we would have three if that a uh, if that hallway didn't crash my game. Right. Oh, that's why I hate this. Oh wait, never mind. They didn't respawn. Okay, sick. All right. Ooh, let me in there. Awesome. Please let me out. Oh, come on. Everything's so dark, I can't see a thing. Oh, there we go. Alright, uh, now... Let's just try to get some help from some of these boxes. Alright. Uh, here we go. This way to victory. Hmm. Uh, we're just gonna try to dodge all these. <laughs> nice. I did not expect that to work, but... Oh! They can't see me. Yeah, um, turrets are only, like, programmed or whatever to shoot at you. Like, once you enter the room, kind of. Like, it's not really a line of sight thing, it's more of a... You know. Yeah, like, he, he could see me then. Because I was in the room. But otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to see me. 
And that's why we're able to safely take them out. Um, I can't remember where that goes. And I know there's one more turret. Where is it? We're gonna be back here, uh, anyways, so we don't really need to do... Jeez. Three missiles, huh? We don't really need to do an intense amount of exploring right here. Dogs cast. How many times will Nightbot have to repeat those words? The ancient words. Alright. Uh, let's read some stuff. <laughs> Any signs of magma? Yeah, that's cool. That's low. They do not. They do a monks of Grand Ham, however, recommended for that market once they run. Merchy Poo Baird says comply. Buy shit. <laughs> Plug the merch. Unstable magma flow. Don't care. Is there any actual lore? No. Okay. I walked right into that thing. Yeah, I kind of don't like this area. <laughs> the music is kind of oppressive. There's lava everywhere. Enemies are annoying. It only gets harder later on in the game. At least there's no boss fights in that place. You kind of think there would be since it's all lava. But after you get through that area... This place is great. I love- this is one of my favorite areas in the game. It's so nice. It's so nice and open. The music is so whimsical. Like, don't get me there is- There are some rough parts of this level, but in general I love it. Lockdown, containment, what, what, lockdown, bro, what you talking about? All projects are postponed. Ration cut and extra duty. Ah, nerd. <laughs> Alright, gotta scan him. <laughs> they are so small. Yeah, there are some pretty, like... Almost, like, gruesome parts of this level that I absolutely... Oh. That I absolutely hate. But. In general. I love this area. I thought the game just crashed. I think, uh, I think you'll be able to tell. Which area I am talking about. We're not going to get there tonight, obviously. Um. But, uh, next Sunday, if I stream this again, uh, I kind of think I will. That thing... What the fuck? <laughs> okay, the knockback in this game is a little, a little messy. That thing, like, poked me, and it tossed me all the way over here. That's insane, I love it. But, um, I, w I 
do plan on streaming this again next Sunday night. Uh, unless there's a, you know, another stream, but. Um, so we'll probably get it then, but yeah, it's pretty easy to tell which area I am referring to. Like, even if you've never played this game, I think, uh, I think you'll be able to tell, like, just when you see the area, like, oh shit, I bet Sam fucking hates this part. <laughs> Or this is the part that Sam absolutely hates. And it's like, yeah, it probably is. It's a very noticeable, noticeably different area than uh, what this has been. Oh, is this where there's no? Welcome back, to these buildings later. Oh, the little ones. Ice Burler. Uh, it is kind of funny how this game just, like, blatantly reuses enemies in different areas, and they just kind of rename it to something else. Like, oh, there's a burrower in this area. What should we call this? It's got ice on it, right? Yeah, it's an ice burrower. <laughs> I don't knock them for it or anything. I, I just think it's funny. Dodge these things because we can't actually hit them yet. Why am I not, uh... Why am I not scanning them? Shred releases. Life form of raw energy. Well, good for him. Good for him. Oh, right. These fucking things. Baby Shigoth. Turn quickly in order to not allow predators the opportunity to strike at the back. Powerful hunters, they fire bursts of electrical gas at potential prey, then feast on their frozen victim. Fuck, he heard me. Fuck, he heard me. Let's run. Ouch. All right, um... Oh, wait. There's lore back here. Yeah, there is. Many Kozo have gone be- or have gone beyond now, and this is a mercy. Those of us who remain suffer in dimensional flux, drifting helplessly across time and space, guided by unseen and inex- inexorable currents the kozo who cling to sanity fight the tide but our minds are weakening soon we will be like the turned chozo who have been utterly corrupted by the great poison the turned still hold to their kozo forms but their minds are black with fell intentions gone is their respect for life they honor only destruction and seek to disrupt the artifacts holding the great poison at bay all life taunts them and they do not rest before long they will be all that remains of the kozo here I use Kozo and Chozo kind of uh, interchangeably. If that drives you mad, I apologize. Alright, I'm not gonna fight you. Never mind, boys, he turned around. Okay, we can't even blow up these boxes. Excuse me, little pill bug. Get up there. This is a platformer. Come on. Oh. oh, wait, we can't go there. Do we have to kill this thing? I think we do. I'm guessing this is another shoot it until it dies. No, they don't actually have a lot of health. Lucky us. Ow. Passed. Oh, look at this. Yeah, we're going to that big temple over there. It's got glowing eyes. Sick dog. Alright.
boost wall. Hmm. Oh, man. This. This is another one of those items that it's like, once you get it, it's like, boom. You know all that shit that you couldn't get? Bam. Well, you can get it now. And what's funny is that feeling of, oh, I can get those items now. Those are almost always tied to the morph ball. And I think that's interesting. Like, the morph ball is literally the most useful tool Samus has. And now we can kind of just speed through these. You'll still get hit, of course, but... Alright, this is, uh... This is gonna kind of be the end of the stream. Uh, we're just getting back to the save station now. Nothing really interesting is gonna- Oh wait! I'm gonna read this first. I'm gonna read this first and then we'll see what happens. Kozo lore. None know if our temple, the cradle, will prove powerful enough to contain this evil forever. How can we Kozo hope for it to remain intact when that which it guards writhes in the darkness? growing always stronger. The fate of this world rests with the gathering of artifacts we call the Cypher, but even if even it is not all-powerful. It is strong, yes, an enchanted hole made of twelve links. Still, it is finite in its reach, and we who guard it are slowly succumbing. When our vigilance crumbles away into madness, the Cypher will be exposed and the fate of Talonfor will be beyond our influence. Alright, well that sucks, but I guess that's where Samus comes in. Alright, we're back out here. Oh! There goes Ridley. I think that's uh, the last time you see him before his boss fight. Yeah, we're, we're probably not going to be seeing him again. For a little while. Is that a spoiler? Is it a spoiler that you fight Ridley in a Metroid game? <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be, uh... You know what? Let's hang out for three more minutes. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang out for, like, two more minutes. Um... Uh, just to get it to two hours. Uh, I'm just gonna hang with the bugs. Any redeem rants? Anybody want to hear anything uh, that isn't copyright music? Um, excuse me? I'm going to sit here and look at my notifications, of which there are like two. <laughs> uh, we're not... We're not doing anything. I'm literally just going to wait the last minute. <laughs> So how's everyone's day? Uh, watch Dogs Cast. <gasps> dogs Cast tomorrow night! What the fuck? Oh my god. I forgot it's literally tomorrow. Holy shit. Uh, hold on. I just realized Control C. Control V. Control V. Hey, is there a limit to how many- Oh, you loser. Oh. <laughs> Control V. It does. I just can't do it too fast or else it won't work. Alright, back to my notifications. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Unus, honest. 